Yo, 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 it's your boy, Jay Best, and welcome back to the Straight to the Point Podcast, Season 2, Episode 23. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about the NBA just for a little bit and talk about the Milwaukee Bucks firing head coach Adrian Griffin and moving on to Doc Rivers, all right? Then after that, I'm going to show some love for Brock Purdy. I'm going to show some love for Brock Purdy because I feel like he's getting too much criticism out there from sports media. And then following that, I'm going to give my AFC Championship game preview between the Chiefs and Ravens and my NFC Championship game preview between the Lions and 49ers and I'm gonna end this episode with a respect the OG segment all right you'll see what that's all about when we get there but before I get to all of that or any of that I do want to thank God for waking me up this morning and allowing me to talk about sports which is something that I love to do without him I would not be here right now so let's go ahead and let's get straight to the point all right um the nba season y'all we're getting closer and closer to all-star break and that final stretch between all-star break and the play-in tournament to me is the most important stretch of the year that's when i really want to start talking about the nba not just because of that stretch but because the nfl season is about to be over as well um i do prioritize the nfl on this show i did the same thing last year talked about the nfl until it got to the super bowl and then i finally started um shifting more towards the nba NBA. The same things happening this year. The NFL season starting to come to a close, so I will be going, um, getting into my NBA mode. All right. So I'm um, just a little for a little bit. I want to talk about the NBA. Um, then the rest of the episode going to be about the NFL because uh, we are at Championship Weekend, which is a very important weekend because Super Bowl, the Super Bowl is right around the corner. But real quick, I want to talk about the Milwaukee Bucks firing head coach Adrian Griffin um, after being 30 and 13. 13, y'all. 30 and 13 was his record before he was fired the other day. They played a game since then, um, since they fired Adrian Griffin. Actually, two games since then. No, they played one game since then, I believe, since they fired Adrian Griffin. Uh, so it was 30 and 13 the day that he got fired. Um, I think it's pretty obvious why he got fired. Everyone knows that um, defensively, this team is not where it should be or where it needs to be um, for this team to be a championship or bust kind of team. When they made the trade for Damian Lillard early this um well going into this season when they traded away Drew Holiday and they got Damian Lillard uh, we all looked at this team well not me but majority of people looked at this team as a championship or bus team when you add Damian Lillard to pair up with Giannis um you expect the ring to come out of that combination all right so because not only they're thirty and thirteen, right, which is a good record. It's a good place to be. They're uh, one of the top seeds in the East as of right now. But the defense has looked horrendous, and I've heard about it on several occasions on different shows, talking about just the mental lapses. Right, it's not just um, them sitting down and actually playing defense. It's um, them leaving guys wide open, people cutting to the basket wide open, getting open shots. It's just a mental lapse on the defensive end. Um, before I talk about Doc Rivers, I do want to defend Adrian Griffin just a little bit. Um, I do not agree with this firing. Um, I don't think that you should fire a coach um, because of the defense of a basketball team. Let me tell you why. Um, I coach a team. I coach a basketball team during the summer. It's our heels for those of y'all that don't know. All right. And one thing that I always tell the players, look, we can't coach defense. We can we can do defensive slides and defensive drills and practice all we want to, but on game day, when y'all play in games, it's about y'all wanting to play defense. Defense is um is something that you want to do. It's not necessarily a skill, it's more effort than it is skill. And um in today's NBA, we all know that defense kind of doesn't really exist. Now, their defense was pretty bad. They ranked like 20th in defensive rating, but um defense to me is not something that can be coached so i feel like we kind of all point the finger at adrian griffin he's 30 and 13 right that's a great record um but we kind of point the finger at him because of the defensive lapses on this team when in reality um defense is not something you can coach you got to go out there and want to play defense that's like a will you got to go out there and really want to stop this person from getting to the basket right that's not something that i can coach um a lot of coaches you can emphasize defense right you can keep preaching it to your players go out there let's lock them up let's do this let's do this but the physical um the physical nature it takes to play defense Right, that physicality, that mentality is not something that I can coach. It's something that the players have to have. 
And the player that had that in Drew Holiday, that's the player you traded in order to get Damian Lillard. We all know Damian Lillard is a great offensive player, but he is not a defensive player player we all know that he is a liability on defense i mean when you get rid of your best perimeter defender and drew holiday um you're kind of going to get weaker in that spot which they have and i think to blame this on adrian griffin to me is not fair because once again you cannot coach defense um i can tell you i can um tell a team what my scheme is where i can tell a team Okay, when somebody comes and set a pick, do I want to blitz the um, person with the ball, the ball handler, right? Do I want to um, hedge the screen? Do I want to – you can teach schemes throughout the defense, right, um, how you want to um, deal with screens, how you want to deal with cutters, how you want to deal – you can – coach that right but i cannot coach you to go out there and sit down in a defensive position a defensive stance and move your feet that's something that you just can't coach so i don't think they should have blamed him for the defense that's more of a player's thing you need to point at the players on this team and say hey lock in on defense right so um, i do think it was a little unfair to fire him because of that because once again you just cannot coach that that is a effort thing that is something that you have to be willing to do it's a mentality that this team does not have but um they did move on to doc rivers who uh we all know well a lot of people know doc rivers for his um of course, his reign that he won back in 08, right, with the Boston Celtics. But ever since then, his playoff success has been pretty um, iffy and a lot of, a lot of blown leads uh, with not only Philly, but also um, during his last stint, like during the last couple of years with Boston and also with the Clippers, um, his playoff success has not been great. Um, he hasn't been surpassed the second round since 2012. And in 2012, he coached Boston, right? Um, but since 22 so they won that championship in 2008 sorry but he's been to the playoffs after that 15 out of the 16 seasons he coached after that championship he'd been to the playoffs missed the playoffs once but nobody really cares about that we're worried about what you do in the playoffs and in the playoffs he hasn't been past second round since 2012 doc rivers is also 16 and 33 in playoff games where his team already has three wins. So when his team has three wins and need that one win to um, to move on to the next round, his team is 16 and 33. So that's a little pause for concern. Uh, I think sometimes we got to be able to look at the situation because sometimes it's different, right? Like last year, I blame that playoff series the way it ended on Joel Embiid and James Harden. Your stars did not show up last year. Therefore, you lost that series to Boston. Um, so I do not blame that series on Doc Rivers. I thought it was, um, wasn't was fair that they fired him after that series. When we all know James Harden was a shell of himself, and he did what he normally does in the playoffs, which is melt down, disappear. And then Joel Embiid also did not play dominant um, at the end of that series against the Boston Celtics. So um, I, to some series it was different, right? Sometimes you can say that Doc Rivers coaching, but sometimes stars got to show up. All right. Um, I, I love bringing this up. Max Kellerman said, the NBA is a player's league. The NFL is a coach's league. All right. The NBA, you need players. Your players got to play. So sometimes we can't just blame the coach for the lack of success because the players got to show up. Now, if my players are showing up and I'm still losing games, that's one thing. But if we can look at certain playoff series and say, OK, Joel Embiid didn't show up. James Harden didn't show up. Or back in Boston, Paul Pierce didn't show up. KG didn't show up. We're looking at the Clippers when he had CP3 and Blake Griffin and Yandre Jordan and them. Some players, some players didn't show up. They didn't show up, right? Unfortunately, Doc Rivers gets the blame for it. But um, I do think that sometimes we can't just blame Doc for his lack of playoff success. But one thing that he will bring to this team is defense, all right? Just looking at his um, three years with the 76ers, right? So 2020 through 2023, last season before he got fired. Um, in 2020, his team ranked second in defensive rating. In 2021, his team ranked 12th in defensive rating. And then in 2022, last year, his team ranked eighth in defensive rating. So Doc Rivers is going to bring a defensive mindset. He's probably going to just emphasize it a lot more. And not saying Adrian Griffin didn't emphasize it, right? You don't, we don't know what happened in the locker room, what was going on on the sidelines uh, when it came to uh, what he was telling his team. But um, hopefully, Doc Rivers can come in and um, just like I said, just emphasize defense because you can't come in and teach guys how to play defense. That's just 
something you can't do, right? I keep saying it. it's not – you cannot coach defense. You can't come in and say, okay, Dane, this is how you sit down and put your arms out and slide with your feet. They're too grown for that. They know how to play defense. It's if they want to do it or not. And if Doc Rivers can come in and kind of get the message across and kind of make them believe that they got to play defense and kind of put that mindset and that chip on their shoulder, then okay. That means Adrian Griffin did not do that. So maybe Adrian Griffin didn't emphasize defense, right? But I just hate the fact that everybody blaming him because they don't want to play defense. But if Doc can come in and get this team to play defense like he has with his teams in the past, then – it's going to be an Adrian Griffin thing. So we'll see how this turns out, and we'll see if it's more of the players just not buying in on the defensive side or Adrian Griffin just couldn't get that message across on um, his team playing defense. So Doc Rivers is not a head coach for the Milwaukee Bucks. He was an analyst at ESPN for like a couple months, right? And now he got a head coaching job right back um, at Milwaukee after being fired last year from the uh, Philadelphia 76ers, all right? Uh, we're going to move on now to the NFL, all right? Uh, that was about a little NBA rant a little bit. I'm going to talk about the NBA more and more on um, my next upcoming episodes, all right? Uh, so, Nick, show some love for Purdy, man. Um, Brock Purdy, uh, that was a conversation me and Logan had when I first started um, this season uh, on the podcast. And me and Logan were talking about Brock Purdy, and I, I told Logan, Brock Purdy is not an elite quarterback. I would not say that because the elite quarterbacks are the Patrick Mahomes of the world. And the, I would even say Josh Allen is elite. When we talk about elite, we talk about talent. All right. And the things that Brock Purdy do does not give me the vibes of Mahomes, of Josh Allen. We can even say Lamar Jackson, okay, because of uh, not only his passing, but his running ability. You can say that's elite. Um, and then looking at um, Aaron Rodgers, who I still believe is elite. We look at um, his passes, his arm talent. Brock Purdy does not bring that to the table. Now, some people also, now, some other people say that he's a game manager, right? He's a game manager. I don't believe he's a game manager because I pulled up Jimmy Garoppolo's stats from 2019 season when the 49ers went to the Super Bowl. It was 13 and 3, had the same head coach, pretty much had the same weapons around Jimmy G. And in, in a 16-game season, right, this is before it became a 17-game season, so in those 16 games, Jimmy G was a game manager. We knew who Jimmy G was. We all know this. Jimmy G threw for 3,978 yards, 27 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, had a QBR of 102. Actually, no, I messed that number up. His QBR was not 102. I promise you that, all right? Um, Brock Purdy. In 2023, so this year, right, the team went 12 and 5, but he played 16 games. When I mean, they sat him out on that last game of the season, um, he also got hurt in um in the game against the Ravens. So take that into consideration as well. He threw 4,280 yards, 31 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, QBR 72.8. Now that's right, the QBR 72.8 is right. So um, and just to kind of understand what the QBR QBR rating is like, the QBR is a quarterback rating. Basically, it's just rating your court your performance as a quarterback this year. It's a hard grading scale, right? Zero to one hundred is very hard for QB rating, right? We look at passer rating as a whole different thing, but QBR is just your overall QB play um, as a grade. And just to put into perspective, what seventy two point eight means, Lamar Jackson has sixty four point seven QBR this year. And Patrick Mahomes had a 63 QBR this year. So um, it's a very tough scale. It's not saying they had a bad season. It's just it's hard to be in the 80s and 90s when it comes to QBRs. And clearly it's hard to be in the 70s because two of the top quarterbacks in the league right now um, are in the 60s. All right, so Brock Purdy is not a game manager. That's one thing that he is not. He is in between. He has um, reinvented. Um, a new layer of QBs. All right, we had the elites. We have the game managers. He's right in the middle, okay, because he can show an elite flash. Like, he makes plays. He makes better plays than Jimmy G ever did, right? Um, but at the same time, he's not making those, oh, my God, kind of plays, like those those highlight reels. He's not doing that either. So he's not elite, but he's not definitely not a game manager. So he's just in the middle. He's in between. I don't really have a word for it. Right. Um, but Cam Newton came out and said that Brock Purdy is not a game changer. I agree to a certain um, extent because we really haven't seen it. We haven't seen a game where we said, oh, they won that game because of Brock Purdy. Right. Um, and I think that's um, 
it's going to be unfortunate because it's going to be hard to make that statement when he plays with Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel and George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk. A lot of people say he's a product of his environment. He's a product of the players that he is around, which is very true, right? But uh, Jimmy G was around uh, almost the same level of talent. Of course, he now Christian McCaffrey, but everyone else pretty much um, he had these players and he did not produce the numbers that Brock Purdy is producing. I think this Kyle Shanahan offense has taken another step forward with Brock Purdy because Brock Purdy talent wise is better than Jimmy G. And Jimmy G is the definition. Like if you look in a dictionary of game and I looked up what game manager means, Jimmy G picture should pop up because he is the definition of a game manager. Brock Purdy is better than that. So that's not what he is. I think he needs more love than what he gets. Um, I hear a lot of people say that when things are going good, Brock Purdy looks great. But when they hit adversity, Brock Purdy looks bad. That's not true. Last week, he led a game-winning a game winning drive against the Packers to win the game. And then um, he's also done it a couple um, another time this season. But for the most part, he's on a good team, so they have the lead. They really don't have to play from behind. When they play from behind, it's very rare. Right. And we've seen him come from behind and win a game or two. So um, I think Brock Purdy just needs more love. We are looking at Brock Purdy and we're just saying he's a product of his, a product of his environment, which is true. It's true. But you have to respect the fact that Jimmy G is a product of, a product of his environment. And his numbers just didn't look like Purdy's. All right. So Purdy is just a, um, like I said, he's not elite. He's not a game manager. He's in between. All right. And I think that's where we need to put him. I think we need to give him his credit. All right. Give him some love. Don't just say he's being carried. He's also doing some of the carrying with this team. All right. It's not just him uh, being carried by the talent around him. I do think that he also puts his talent in good position to be successful. I think it's all one big pie and everybody has a slice of it. Kyle Shanahan has a slice of it. Brock Purdy has a slice of it. Debo Samuel, Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle. It's just a great roster with players that just know how to play off each other know how to put them um, put their teammates in great positions to be successful and that's what it should be I think we shouldn't be talking about how Brock Purdy is being carried by his team I think that's an unfair statement and I do think we need to put some more respect and give more credit and more love to Brock Purdy who was in the NFC championship this is his second year in the NFL last year was his first year maybe he came in for the injured Jimmy Garoppolo and the injured Trey Lance took his team to the NFC championship he got hurt the Eagles won that game this year his second year in the league he is once again in the NFC championship um and looks like he's going to be going to the Super Bowl this year so we got to give some love and put some respect on Brock Purdy's name all right um my next segment we're gonna do we're gonna get our two game previews and then i'm gonna end this episode with the respect to the og segment can't wait to do that i got a lot to get off my chest but AFC championship i'm gonna be honest with y'all um one thing i would do i would come on this episode and i would i'll come on this podcast sorry and i will admit when i am wrong i was wrong about the AFC championship and the nfc championship um i did not think the chiefs or the ravens would be here and I think throughout the year, I gave y'all evidence of why I don't think they will be here. For the Ravens, it was more of a, I thought there was a fraudulent number one seed. Let me tell you why. Because in years past, when you had the Patriots and the Chiefs as a number one seed, I looked at them and I looked at the rest of the AFC and I said, okay, there's a gap between the number one seed and the rest of the AFC. Well, this year, to me, Baltimore did not have that big of a gap between even the seven seed because the Steelers beat Baltimore twice this year. Yes, one game was uh, without Baltimore starters, but they beat Baltimore early this year. So Baltimore could have gotten got by any team in this playoff. They didn't, of course, but that was my mindset. They could get got by any team in the AFC uh, while in the AFC picture, probably off outside of the Miami Dolphins because I had no faith in them. I said they were just bullies and not that good of a team. But any other team to me could have taken out the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens ended up facing an overachieving Texans team in the second round of the playoffs. I'm not going to make that an excuse because I picked Texans to win that game, right? But they came out, they shut me up, and they beat a very hot Texans team who was overachieving. Um, and now they're in the AFC Championship. This is what happens when you get the number one seed. You just win one game and you're in the AFC Championship. So great job to them. And I apologize to them for not thinking that they would be here. Uh, same thing with the Chiefs. I do apologize for not even questioning Mahomes' greatness, but I just thought that 
there was it was going to be a little time period right where this chief kingdom wasn't going to be the same and i thought we saw flashes of it this year when we saw the frustration from the homes and we saw all the drop balls and all the uh, the penalties and we saw Mahomes just losing it on the sidelines i thought that was the signs of this chief's kingdom crumbling and falling apart um maybe i can make the argument if they lose this weekend but the fact that they're in the afc championship game i said they would be first round exits they played the dolphins a team i had no respect for so i picked them to win that game but i picked the bills to win last week and they beat them, and now they're back in the AFC Championship game again. Mahomes is in the AFC Championship game every year, so I got to put respect on his name. And um, now they're here going to Baltimore against the Ravens. Um, like I said, two teams that I underestimated this year. Uh, I had my reasons, so I didn't just come up here and say that they, they're they not going to make the AFC Championship game just for no reason. I had my reasons. Um, but going into this game, I would be so wrong to go against Patrick Mahomes. This has nothing to do with Lamar Jackson. This is just, Mahomes has been here. Lamar Jackson has not been here before, right? As much as we like to talk about how good Lamar Jackson has been in his career, he's about to be a two-time MVP. I've already gave my opinion about that. Um, I'll talk about that another day. But um, he has not been in this situation before. He's two and three in the playoffs. Like he won last week and everybody went crazy from Lamar, but that was just his second win. Um to three losses, right? So he's still below 500 in the playoffs. Um, and for him to be in the AFC Championship game, I guess a guy that's been here every year since he's been in a Chiefs uniform, to me, that that is a disadvantage right there by itself, just experience, all right? Um, but then not only that, but I'm looking at a coaching matchup between John Harbaugh and Andy Reid. I'm taking Andy Reid all day, every day. I look at the quarterback, I'm taking Mahomes over Lamar Jackson. I look at the defenses. The defenses, to me, are low-key equal. Like, the Ravens are a really good defense, but I do think that the Chiefs also have um, talent on the defensive side of the ball, and that's um, a side of the ball that kind of carried them throughout this year when they had offensive struggles. So I do think that the Chiefs uh, will come out victorious with this one, and they will make the Super Bowl again. Um, either way, whether the Chiefs win or the Ravens win, uh, it made me look bad. My credibility looks pretty bad right now because, like I said, I didn't have either one of these teams here. But I do think that Lamar, that Mahomes is going to come out and basically say, hey, I still run this, right? I think the whole world is rooting for Lamar, not just because of the whole Taylor Swift thing, but I think some people are tired of seeing Mahomes in the Super Bowl, tired of seeing Mahomes in the spotlight. But this is a chance for Mahomes to come in into Baltimore and say, hey, this is still my, my conference. I still represent this. It might not be in Kansas City, but I can get the job done. All right, so I'm going to go with the Chiefs over the Ravens this upcoming weekend in the AFC Championship game. All right, uh, the NFC Championship game between the Lions and the 49ers. Um, once again, I was wrong about the Lions, but not necessarily wrong about the Lions. Let me tell you what happened. With the Lions, they came into the playoffs, and I said they would lose to the Rams first round. I said it was fool's goal all year. All year I said this was a playoff team that would get there and lose probably round one. Well, well hopefully I was saying they were losing round one so I could be right because I was like, look, this team is going to get to the playoffs. They're going to get over that hump. The Lions make the playoffs for the first time forever, right? But they're not ready yet, I figure, after this year. Next year, then they'll become a real contender. But this year, not so fast. But I was also betting on the fact that the Eagles and the 49ers would be the two big dogs in the NFC. That didn't happen. The Eagles fell flat, and they ended up losing round one. So the Lions should have won against the Eagles in round two in my eyes, right? And it should have been the Eagles and the 49ers in the NFC Championship. But the Eagles fell apart. So Tampa Bay went on to play the Lions. I picked the Lions because Tampa Bay overachieved. And now you have the Lions and the 49ers. So it was kind of a I was wrong slash things just didn't fall the way that I thought they would fall. That's why I was wrong. Um, but I do think that this Cinderella story comes to an end. I do think that the 49ers, I said, coming to the playoffs are Super Bowl favorites for a reason. From top to bottom, looking at their roster, they have no holes, right? The only thing that the 49ers are praying for this weekend is no injuries. That's the only thing they're worried about is getting into the Super Bowl safe and sound and, and healthy, right? Because if you do, if you lose a couple of players, then that's when you get worried for this team. But if I'm the 49ers, I'm just thinking, look, we stay healthy. We can win this weekend, and we can definitely win the Super Bowl. I think that between the four teams that are left, this team has the best roster top to bottom. 
this team has, I argue that Kyle Shanahan is probably one of the best play callers in the league. Um, a lot of people will say Andy Reid. I'm going to take Kyle Shanahan strictly play calling wise because I've seen Kyle Shanahan drop some things that I have never seen coaches draw up. And not only that, but Kyle Shanahan is doing it with, he did with Jimmy G, about to do with Brock Purdy. Andy Reid has people argue the greatest quarterback of all time. I don't think so, but talent wise, he's definitely up there for one of the best quarterbacks to ever do it. So the fact that Andy Reid kind of has that luxury and Kyle Shanahan doesn't, I give Kyle Shanahan the edge when it comes to play calling. Now, Kyle Shanahan has all the other weapons, right? But the QB is the most important thing. And uh, also, Kyle Shanahan's offense is very, very, very QB friendly. Um, but this game being in San Francisco, I think San Fran knows that we are one game from where we thought we should have been last year. Because, you know, last year Brock Purdy gets hurt. Then you have a quarterback in the NFC Championship, and the backup quarterback got hurt. Um, so they, they think about last year like that probably could have been us in the Super Bowl last year. So this year, let's get the job done. Let's go be a Lions team that's not better than us on the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball. This is a game where they have to just go out there and punch the Lions in the mouth. Don't give the Lions any hope. Go out there, put your foot on their throat, and do not let up. You are the better team. There is no spot on um, between these two teams where I say the Lions are better. I think the QB-wise, I'm taking Brock Purdy over Jared Goff. When I look at the running back position, I'm taking Christian McCaffrey over Jameer Gibbs. When I look at the just the skill position in general, right? Amon Raw, Jameer, um, Jamison Williams, Sam LaPorta, um, David Montgomery, they're nice. But the real dogs are Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel. Well, Debo Samuel is questionable for this game, but Christian McCaffrey as well. And he's got Kyle Juszczyk. Um, and then looking at the O-line, I'm taking both O-lines are pretty good, but I'm going to take the 49ers O-line led by Trent Williams. And then you look at the defense, that's where it's like a big drop-off, right? This Lions defense, their secondary is not that great, right? And I think Brock Purdy can have a field day with this secondary. And, and, and the Lions know going into this game, I'm worried about the run game. I'm worried about Christian McCaffrey running this ball so Brock Purdy really can have a great day through the air. So I'm taking the 49ers, and I think it's not going to be close. I think they're going to come out, punch the Lions in the mouth. Lions had a great season. Uh, they did a little bit more than maybe we expected. I didn't expect them to make it this far, and I think nobody did because I think everybody knew it was the Eagles and the 49ers. Some people said Cowboys, but nobody really thought that Detroit Lions would make it this far. But they did. Congratulations. But I think that road comes to an end. So we're going to have a Super Bowl rematch from 20, the 2020 season of the 49ers and the Chiefs, I believe. That's what's going to be a Super Bowl matchup following championship weekend. All right. And this um, show is almost over, but I do want to do this segment right here. Respect the OGs, man. Um, we live in a <laughs> we live in a generation now where I think overreaction is um is the word is the word of this generation overreaction um i've heard a lot of people this past week say that mahomes is the greatest quarterback of all time and i find that very 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 disrespectful to the ogs the one that's the ones that's been here the ones that showed their greatness they had to retire and now all of a sudden this quarterback comes in the league red hot no doubt he's probably had the best start to any quarterback's career ever but to say that he's already the greatest of all time, to me, is very disrespectful. All right, I'm looking at at least three quarterbacks for sure that you cannot say Mahomes should be ahead of as of right now. I want to say four, but the other one is kind of more of a favoritism thing. Well, I can make the argument, but you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But he's not better than Tom Brady. Okay, let's just be honest, all right? Tom Brady, seven Super Bowls, five Super Bowl MVPs, three MVP, regular season MVPs, 15-time Pro Bowl. 15-time Pro Bowl. Like, put some respect on Tom Brady's name. I understand. You can say, you can make the argument that Patrick Mahomes is on pace to be the greatest quarterback of all time, but to say it right now is disrespectful. Respect the OG. Peyton Manning, all right, two Super Bowls. One Super Bowl MVP, five MVPs, five MVPs, all right, 14-time Pro Bowler. His MVP season in 2013, he had 55 passing touchdowns and 5,477 passing yards. That was as an old man. That's when Peyton Manning was in his career. He did that, 
All right, those numbers are insane. And that was in a 16 game season. In two 17 game seasons we've had so far, no quarterback has came close to that. All right, so put some respect on Peyton Manning's name. Respect the OGs. All right, Joe Montana, four Super Bowls, three time Super Bowl MVP, two MVPs, eight time Pro Bowler. Before Tom Brady became the GOAT, I was always hearing that Joe Montana is the GOAT. So how can we just throw Mahomes in front of Brady? He hasn't even passed Joe Montana yet. All right, respect the OGs. And then um, you can argue Patrick Mahomes is fourth. You can, I would give you that argument. I would not be mad if you said, okay, he's fourth on the all-time list. Because not only are you looking at his talent, but you're also looking at what he's done so far. Two Super Bowl, two Super Bowl MVPs, two MVPs, six-time Pro Bowler. All right, I, I, I can respect that if you say he's fourth. All right, but to say he's the greatest of all time, that's just disrespectful. Respect the OGs. Um, and then Aaron Rodgers, all right? You can say it's a little favoritism in there, but what Aaron Rodgers has done before Mahomes, it was Aaron Rodgers. We'll talk about talent. Aaron Rodgers, to me, still is the most talented quarterback I've ever seen arm-wise. There's not one throw that Mahomes can make that Aaron Rodgers can't make. Same thing, vice versa. So to me, it's more of a tie than anything. People look at me in the face and say Mahomes is better than Aaron Rodgers. I think it's false. Aaron Rodgers has one Super Bowl. Okay, one Super Bowl MVP. That's the downfall, right? But it's only going to get better from here. He has four MVPs. Two. He has a back-to-back -back MVP on Mahomes' watch. Mahomes in his prime right now, the guy I call him the greatest quarterback of all time, he won back-to-back -back MVPs on Mahomes' watch. All right, respect the OG and your 10-time Pro Bowl. All right, so I just think that we are in a – like I said, sports media is crazy now. Social media is crazy. But well, we just like to like to like to anoint people um, titles way too early. Like let Mahomes finish his career first before we talk about um, greatest of all time. Let him at least get half the Super Bowl rings and Tom Brady get. If he wins his third Super Bowl ring this year, then you can start making the arguments cool. But right now, today, as of Friday, January twenty sixth. He should not be in the greatest of all time debate to me. That's just disrespectful to the OGs. Respect them, man. I think that we like to just throw away um, legends, people that then came and set the standard for Mahomes, people that came and paved the way from Mahomes. And now Mahomes is here, and we acting like we've never seen greatness before. We just saw it. We saw it with Tom Brady. We saw it with Peyton Manning. Um, I didn't see it with Joe Montana, but people saw it with Joe Montana. We saw it with Aaron Rodgers, just the greatness. All right, so we put respect on the OGs, man. I understand everybody excited, Mahomes um, making these left-handed passes and these no-look passes and these. I understand, but let's just pause, pump the brakes, all right? Let him, because if he was to lose this upcoming weekend to Lamar Jackson and never win another playoff game, never win another Super Bowl, that could happen, right? That's possible. It probably won't, but it's possible. Then what? Then we jump the gun, right? So let's just relax, Pump the brakes. Do not say he's the greatest of all time. Do not even say he's in that conversation yet. You can say he's on pace. I will respect that. But to put him in the conversation with Brady, Peyton Manning, and Joe Montana, to me, Aaron Rodgers is disrespectful just because of how premature it is. A couple years from now, and actually since he won the second Super Bowl, I kind of let that argument go. So just say Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Joe Montana. He's not above them. And there's a lot of other quarterbacks that other people might name, like the John Elways and Troy Aikmans of the world, just because of their success in the postseason. Um, and you can argue that they're above Mahomes, too. But you got to factor Mahomes' talent into play um, as well, and that's what a lot of people do. But, hey, I just think that we're jumping the gun. I just think that we need to respect the OGs, man, respect the Bradys, the Mannings, the Montanas of – the world all right um and that is it for today's episode straight to the point podcast man i appreciate y'all for tuning in um i did take a little break from uh not necessarily a break but i had just started school um just got back into school after once a break so i was trying to trying to fill out everything my schedule and all of that that's why i did not do an episode uh, i did an episode last week but i did not do an episode this week until now haven't even done any videos on Instagram or nothing like that because I've just been trying to get back into the school spirit, right? No such thing, but just trying to get back into the flow of things at school, all right? Um, but that is it for today, man. Enjoy championship weekend. The NFL is flying by. It's almost over. The Super Bowl is right around the corner, which means offseason is also 
right around the corner, man. So make sure y'all enjoy this upcoming weekend. I got Chiefs. I got 49ers in the Super Bowl. Next time I see y'all, that will be the matchup, all right? Much love. Y'all stay blessed. I'm out.